So the next lecturer today is Professor Aris Papagiorgio from the University of Oxford and St. George's in London. He had the first session of today in the plenum speaking about AI, and I'm very happy that he will share with us now about the recent advancements in AI and about how this is going to change obstetrical ultrasound. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Gerald. Uh, thank you very, very much. And uh, we're going to, for those of you who were here in the morning, you know uh, already some of the principles we talked about, so we're not going to talk about that anymore. This is really about screening and not missing fetal abnormalities. Why is it important not to miss abnormalities? Because abnormalities are associated with more morbidity and mortality. In particular, cardiac abnormalities, so babies that have uh, an abnormality that is missed do much worse in the perinatal period than those babies where it is detected, uh, especially for late cyanosing disease when the duct is closes. So that goes to the second point. It allows you to optimize the timing in the place of birth. It improves outcomes. Uh, some women will, of course, uh, couples will, of course, exercise their reproductive choice. And uh, naturally, we are always concerned about medical legal concerns. So why do we miss abnormalities? Generally speaking, the few studies that have looked at why we miss abnormalities suggest that we miss abnormalities because we forgot to look at a particular structure. Usually, uh, when, you, uh, when a baby is born and there's a fetal anomaly that was undetected prenatally, you go back to your ultrasound record and you find that there's image it was missing of that particular structure. You forgot to examine it. It's easy to forget. Why is it easy to forget? We're all humans. We're scanning patient after patient after patient. There's 20 different images that we have to remember to take. And it's quite easy to remember that, you know, the spine that I took was of the last patient rather than of this one. In addition to that, what's very different in obstetric ultrasound screening as opposed to screening an adult is that the sequence in which you do things is completely random. In this paper, we looked at the sequence in which ultrasound images are taken. So in some scans, you start with the head and the brain. In others, you start with the thorax, the abdomen, and the heart. It's completely random. There is no, even if you have a system in your head, uh, we all depend on the fetal position. So the lack of a universal screening sequence means that our anomaly screening is opportunistic. And these are the challenges that we face every day. In order to help with these challenges, a year ago, uh, in collaboration with GE, we, um, uh, GE launched uh, uh, Sonlist uh, IR, which stands for image recognition. I showed a short video clip of this earlier today. During the scan, when I freeze the image, two things happen. On the top left-hand corner, a label comes up automatically. It says this is the fetal bladder. And on the right-hand side of the image, there's a little pizza wheel, uh, which allows us to track all the 20 images that we need to gather during our fetal anomaly scan. And gradually, it will uh, fill that in. And we're really excited this year uh, to uh, launch the next version of this, okay? So what that previous system was doing is when I froze the image, when I froze the image, the ultrasound machine was recognizing the image, right? What if it was working that fast that it could look at every image in real time? What could you do? You could extract the image automatically while you're scanning, a good quality image while you're scanning. Does that make sense? So during the ultrasound scan, I'm scanning over the face, and the ultrasound machine's going to go and grab that face for me. I don't need to freeze. It's just going to capture it. I'm going to go and show you how that works right now, next door. Uh, OK. Oh, thank you. Hi. So this very nice lady is 22 weeks pregnant and has volunteered today to uh, show us the baby. Thank you. So here on this little um, wheel here, down here, you're going to see um, something called Sonalis Live. I don't know if you can see that. So let's start, first of all, without Sonalis Live, just to orientate ourselves. So it's a cephalic baby, and you can see the little heartbeat there. And it's always friendly just to say hello to the baby, first of all, if we can. Oh, baby's kind of looking at us. Okay. So, you can see 
uh, this nice 22-week uh, baby lying in a reasonably good position. And what we're going to do is switch on Sonalist Live. So what Sonalist Live is going to do is in real time going to uh, capture images. So the first thing you'll notice is a little um, baby here in the, on this right-hand side. You can see the cartoon baby. And these views that you have all around are all the views that we're going to need to capture during our anomaly scan. So the spine, the heart views, the brain views, facial views, extremities, abdominal, and uh, urine cervix, okay? And we're going to also point out is that down here, there's a little space that is looking for the plane. I'm on no particular plane at the moment, so it's gray. And as I go to a plane, so for example, here in the transthalamic plane, what it's doing then, it's saying, Aris, you're on the transthalamic plane. So it's labeling it for me in real time. But what's more, it's grabbing images in the background. So on this right-hand side, where the cartoon is of the baby, you can see that it's capturing images. And the little tick box there suggests that that image has been captured. So I'm going to move here to the transcerebellar plane. An image has been captured. Now, if I press the measurement button, it's going to show me that last image. Can you see that there? And it's going to measure the cerebellum. Now, there's a couple of noteworthy things right here on this image. One is that it's yellow. Can you see? It's yellow. It's not green. So it's, not a, it's an OK image, but it's not perfect. Why it's not perfect? If you look at the imaging criteria here, the system is saying, I'm not sure I can see the cavum septum pellucidum. And I'm actually in agreement here with this system. It's not really seeing the CSP. Okay? So if I unfreeze and if I carry on scanning, what the system does, it will always look for a better image. Okay? So it'll be, um, it'll be overwriting the last image with a better image. So if I go to that next image now, this is the next image, and you can see all my imaging criteria on that bottom right-hand corner. Can you see that there? So all of them are now ticked off as correct. And you can see that the automatic measurement tool comes up, and I can, of course, adjust that if I want. If I accept the measurement, I set the measurement, then it's going to go on, on to measure the next thing. OK, so. So what the system is doing all the time here, so it's captured the three uh, views that I need of the brain. So it's captured the transthalamic, transventricular, and transcellular view. I can see them over here uh, if I want to inspect them. Uh, so if I click, for example, on this transventricular view, and it's got a little warning sign at the bottom there. So see that? The image was captured by Sonalist Live and not reviewed yet. It'll be reviewed now, and I will accept it. Okay, so let's just go back to live scanning. So uh, what this basically means is that I can scan in real time and just go through all the different views that I need to go through without having to freeze and save. It's, uh, you can see there that it's saved an image of the nose and lips. It's going to save now an image of the orbits. And I can just go through my scan in the knowledge that the relevant images are being collected by the system as I'm scanning through this baby. Uh, let me just go down the baby here, coming down to, to the abdomen. There's a cord insertion there. Uh, I don't know if you can see on the right-hand side of the screen. I wish I was in the room so I could point to you. But if you see on the right-hand side of the screen over here, you can see that all those abdominal images have already been captured, essentially. the. Um, um, abdominal circumference, the kidney views, and the bladder. I'll take another view of the kidneys because I, I didn't see it capturing them. Here we come down to the legs of the baby, capturing a femur there. Let's just go to the measurement functionality so you can see that the femur has been captured and measured automatically, and then I can accept that and carry on down my journey down the legs here, capturing the lower segment of the legs, coming down to the feet. This little foot there, it's capturing the foot. Uh, you do have the ability to, um, uh, to set it to capture 
any number of images over here. So you can see at the moment this uh, system is set up to capture, I don't know how many, uh, up to three. Uh, but you can uh, set it to capture just a single image or five, depending on your hospital protocol. So a lot of hospitals will have, uh, the, 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 they will ask you to capture a single image of each view. But for example, for the biometry measurements, it might ask for uh, a number, uh, which is often three. You also have the facility to have both feet separately. And then you, um, uh, during the workflow, you can label them right and left as you go through the baby. Looking at the hands here. So I, I hope you can see that as I'm scanning through this baby, it's kind of collecting those images. And I'm not really having to click and freeze and unfreeze and do all that because the images are collected in the background. I can see them here appearing on my left. Importantly, it's not dependent on the uh, preset. So I can go to my cardiac preset here in order to see the heart. Baby is not in the optimal position for the, for the heart, but we'll see how far we can get. So starting here at the four chamber view. Now, of course, um, it is collecting the images automatically, but of course I have the facility to also freeze images and capture them manually, uh, just like uh, I would normally. So it's uh, intended as a, an assistive tool, not really to take over your uh, daily function, but to, to help while you are doing the scan. So if I just recall that last image again, maybe I can, oops, how do I recall that last image? Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, for example. So um, here again, you can see the imaging criteria. So each single view has imaging criteria. Some Im images have more criteria than others. So for example, the abdominal circumference, as you know, has lots of imaging criteria. Other views such as the uh, uh, three vessel view here has fewer criteria, uh, but all of those are available to view as we go through uh, the fetal ultrasound scan, if we wish. So you can interact with the system as much or as little as you want. So you can just have it running in the background as it is at the moment, uh, or you can uh, ask quite a lot of it um, so that it's captured a, a profile. Let's just go to that profile just to have a quick look. So here you can see these are the imaging criteria for profile. You need to see the forehead, you need to see the nasal tip, and you have to have optimal magnification of the image. Now, if I um, went to end my examination now, say I said, oh, okay, I think I've seen everything, and I clicked end, what I get is a, a little sheet here and says, Iris, you haven't finished your job at all because you haven't seen any of the spinal views. You haven't seen the LVOT, for example. You haven't properly uh, viewed the sagittal uh, view of the foot, etc. Then it gives me uh, the option here in front of me that I can see on my screen, which is actually I'm going to accept the exam and end it, or I, I go to continue the exam. So I'm just going to click continue exam and carry on to try and see some of those remaining views that I have to get. Let's uh, see if we can start with the spine. That's the spine you can see there. Spine is broken up into four segments here for the purposes of uh, Sonolist Live. You can see the spine here in four segments, the uh, cervical spine, the thoracic spine, uh, lumbar spine. Uh, so it's going to ask us to visualize all of those segments of the spine. Now, occasionally, the uh, baby may be in such a perfect position that you get the whole spine in one single image, uh, and uh, that, that is perfectly allowable. But more often than not, you will need to sort of travel up and down the spine a little bit like this in order to make sure that you've seen the entirety of it. So you can see all those purple little clicks, all those purple little ticks. That means that my spinal examination is now complete, and I can carry on and see some other features. Um, so I've got this here in real time. Uh, I can look at it at any time. If you don't like this uh, baby uh, with all the pictures, some people find it quite a lot, you can just go to the little pizza wheel that we had on the other system that you saw there earlier. So it's telling me that I've got 14 out of the 28 views. And um, if I click on it again, it will uh, show me which views I have that are still outstanding. Um, so. I know that, uh, what did we have? Okay, 
so our cardiac examination was far from complete actually so let's see if we can uh, if we can get a little bit better cardiac views in this baby so I'm scanning here with a uh, 3D probe, but I use it as a 2D probe. I often scan with the 3D probe, actually. It fits my hand quite nicely. It's quite a light probe, and also it means that I can switch from uh, 2D to 3D whenever I wish without too much uh, interference of having to change. And it's a, a very good uh, imaging resolution also in 2D. So you can see how that four-chamber view goes green and orange depending on also the cardiac cycle uh, uh, and you can see that it's captured the four chamber view there it's captured the LVOT earlier and it's just uh, missing the three vessel view three vessel tracheal view so just capturing those and then if we get the left ventricular outflow tract works on b-mode imaging uh, and if you use color um, then if you use color in the, in the dual function, it will still pick up the, the B-mode image as well. Good. So it has captured one of the images. In order to complete right now, we've set it to three. So uh, it's looking for three of all those images. But I've got one picture of that. And in the orbits, it's reminding me that it needs uh, me to look at the orbits of the baby. So I'm going to try and do that. Uh, just capturing the orbits there. Sorry. Come on, baby. Move a little bit. There we go. Good. And as I say, you can, uh, you can of course, manually capture images as well if you just freeze that for me and manually capture that. So sometimes, uh, as it happened just then, it may not. Uh, be happy with the image for a variety of reasons. Good. So, um, so this is how it works. I don't know if anyone has any questions from the audience. There's a microphone there. I'm sorry I can't see you to call you up, but if there are any questions, if you wanted me to show anything specific, or if you have any questions around the functionality of the system, please let me know. Um, Thank you. Thank are, you very much, Aris, for showing yeah. it because uh, we are running out of time. Okay. And I would like to invite anyone, in case there are any questions, to come over and see us afterwards in the Wolluson Club Lounge or in the Wolluson booth. So yeah. thank you very much for this fascinating presentation. I think it's very impressive to see what's, what's going on here.